Hi there, I'm Luke Price, geologist, author of Epic Fantasy, and very soon to be a father. Um, it's been a very, very stressful and exciting time for me and my wife, and um, with everything that's been going on lately and all the things that we've had to think about, I, I just haven't been getting much writing done lately. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of time, and uh, I've kind of gotten into a funk with my writing. So I thought that this would be a good time to begin this series that I've been meaning to do for a while, wherein I'm going to read chapter by chapter, sequentially, um, a book that I wrote earlier in the year. Now I will post these videos on my website, and I will link them to YouTube, and so they'll be available for anyone who wants to see them. And after I've got a few up, I'll start removing them from the beginning. So they won't all be available, but you can sort of follow the series. Maybe I'll do one a week and um, eventually we'll get this whole thing posted. Now this is a trial version, so if you s you'll notice this counter in the bottom here. Uh, once that hits 15 minutes, I'm done. So the first chapter here is, is a little lengthy. It's about 12 pages, so I'm going to have to read really fast and get started right now. So um, without any further ado, let's begin our reading of A Trifold Oath. So chapter one. To a girl of ten summers, Breakwater was a magical place rife with wonder. Situated on the beautiful white shores of the southern lands, it was guarded in the west by the impenetrable terminus and stared across the straits at the distant hills of the Shard. Shielded thus from foreign influence and protected by a well-funded guard fiercely loyal to the Earl, Breakwater was predominant among the fiefdoms and acted as their intermediary with the rest of the world. Anatris was the Earl's eldest daughter, a station which afforded her a great deal of respect among the citizenry. Known affectionately as Anna everywhere she went, she was well liked by guardsmen and servants alike. She possessed both her father's charisma and her late mother's composure, as well as a charming face which made her every request impossible to deny. Anna was the envy of every little girl in Breakwater, including her sisters, Lanaria and Gruen. Those two were always eager to follow along on her many adventures, even those so obviously designed with the intentional risk of getting in trouble. Anna, a stern voice commanded from somewhere up above. Turning suddenly from her intense stare across the straits, Anna saw her father's agitated face peering down at her from a window carved into the mottled stones of the family manor. The cobbled patio overlooking the harbor was her own private sanctuary, a refuge for the company of her thoughts alone. The earl and his army of tenants were well aware of her occasional need for solitude and generally respected her boundaries. This interruption was not, therefore, unwarranted. Yes, father, Anna called back, twisting her face into the most innocent expression she could muster. But the earl was not so easily swayed. Get up here, girl, he shouted down at her. I've need of a few words. Anna knew exactly to what his irritation was pertaining. Her days of bribing guardsmen to venture beyond the walls had finally caught up to her, and she was past due for a thorough lecture about the responsibilities of a noble lady. We are leaders, her father would say, and leaders must set an example for those who follow. With a heavy sigh, Anna pulled back from the parapet and wiped the dust from her sleeves. Knowing her father was watching impatiently from above, she approached the building in a hurried yet stately manner, breaking into a run as soon as she was beyond his line of sight. Household servants stepped hastily aside as she came barreling past them down the lengthy corridors, taking care not to spill glasses or drop tools as they awkwardly evaded the light-footed child who kept them perpetually on their toes. The earl was standing with his back to the doorway when Anna arrived outside his chambers. A candle on her father's desk was burned nearly down to the wick. He had been here for some time, undoubtedly studying the latest hefty stack of ledgers and reports. Ever since the death of his wife, the earl had poured himself wholly into the management of their estate. He was a competent and hard-working leader, but Anna knew that women's work was intrinsically beyond the capabilities of any man. Anatris, the earl said softly, turning though he had not announced her, uh, turning though she had not announced her presence. God's curse me, girl. Have you any idea how easily you can stoke my ire? Recognizing that this was no time for playing at innocence, Anna hung her head. Yes, sir, she said respectfully. I'm sorry I disobeyed you. Sometimes I just have the urge to see what's out there. The earl shook his head. You know, you're just smart enough to get yourself into all sorts of trouble. Do you know why I don't want you going outside? Anna hesitated. No, sir, she admitted. Not really. What's out there, her father said sternly, taking a step closer, is a world of unbridled danger, particularly for a headstrong girl such as yourself. With a sigh, he knelt before her and took her small shoulders in his enormous hands. The frontier beyond the terminus is wild and lawless, governed only by greed and subject to undomesticated beasts. And the autarchies are no better. The lowliest sort of scum infests the northern cities, Anna trading humans like merchandise and rewarding malice with respect. We have rules in the fiefdom, yes, and a strict chain of obedience, but even the ruling families are held accountable for their actions. 
But Father, Hannah protested calmly, how can I learn to protect the fiefdoms if I never leave the shelter of my own home? In her father's eyes she saw the pain of hopes unrealized. Some day, Anna, you will be old enough to recognize the stubbornness in the hearts of men. You will have to make decisions not only for yourself but for all of Breakwater, and it will frustrate you endlessly to see the coldness with which you are forever regarded by those beyond our walls. Then he pointed a finger sternly in her face, but at present I am still the Earl as well as your father, and I expect you to set a better example and look out for your sisters. Is that understood? Bravely, Anna met her father's gaze. Yes, sir, she said. Excellent. Mussing her curly hair as though she were a boy, the earl rose to his feet. Although she liked her hair fixed a certain way, Anna had never been bothered by her father's affection. Now go and call Lanaria and Gruen for dinner, he told her, and do try to keep them from fighting if you can. Anna had just turned to carry out her father's wishes when a blue-garbed sentry of the breakwater guard appeared in the doorway, gasping for breath. Noticing the glint of naked steel in his hand, Anna glanced up nervously at her father. The earl brushed past her, taking a defensive posture as he confronted the man. What is the meaning of this? he hissed. The sentry glanced hesitantly at Anna, then looked back at the Earl. Sire, he said anxiously, there are warships sailing through the straits, a whole fleet of them. Best estimates put their numbers on the order of hundreds. Warships, the Earl exclaimed, and the fiefdoms. Helplessly, the sentry shrugged. No uniforms betwixt them, my lord. Their sails are unadorned, the crew a rough-looking sort. Slavers, Anna heard her father mutter. The terminus was meant to protect us from such savagery, but I suppose the channelers have already done their duty in emplacing it. There was a bitter edge to his voice. Muster the guard in force, the earl commanded. I want no more than five paces between each pair of boots on those docks, and archers all along the ramparts. Get everyone else inside their homes and tell them to bar the doors. Go! As the sentry rushed off to make the prescribed preparations, the earl lifted his own sword from a clamp on the wall and turned back to Anna. Stay close to me, Anatris, he said firmly, though she could, though she could tell that he was afraid. We need to find your sisters and see that they're safe. Anna could feel her heart pounding as she followed her father down the elegantly decorated hallways that had so suddenly morphed from a playground into a prison. The surrealism of the experience filled her with the same foreboding that she had felt the night before her mother's death. It was difficult not to blame Lanaria for that, but in time she had come to accept the unfortunate unavoidability of tragedy. Servants flocked to the Earl, beseeching him for instructions, but Anna knew that his mind was focused solely upon the all-important task of finding his daughters. She possessed the same single-mindedness, a trait others often mistook for obstinacy or arrogance. Finally, they emerged onto the central courtyard of the, into the central courtyard of the estate, Anna scurrying along to keep up with her po father's powerful strides. She, too, was filled with dread at not knowing her sister's whereabouts. Lanaria, her father shouted across the open grounds. Gruen, where are you? Men of the breakwater guard filed briskly past them, rushing toward the gates of the manor to prepare for the eventuality of a breach. As the cold grip of panic threatened to paralyze Anna, her younger sisters finally padded toward them across the adjacent gardens with a terror-stricken servant in desperate pursuit. I'm deeply sorry, sire, the woman said, terrified. I tried to keep the ladies in their quarters, but they insisted upon searching for you. That's quite all right, Amisa, the earl said absently, crouching down to throw his arms around the three of them all at once. It's lucky that you girls are all so disobedient. It was Len's fault, said Gruen, younger than Anna by two years, but the biggest and toughest of them all by far. I told her we ought to stay put. Lanaria, the youngest, stuck her delicate chin out indignantly. I merely suggested that father might be concerned. You were both right, dears, said the earl, standing back up. He was dressed modestly in a belted tunic and lounging shoes, but Anna thought he had never looked more regal than standing guard over them with his sword in hand. Now follow me closely and hold tight to your sister, Anna. Where are we going, Anna protested, as her father resumed his furious pace. As he turned back, the earl's grave expression more than sufficiently conveyed his desperation. Anna was smart enough to know that Breakwater was not equipped for all-out warfare, and despite their bravery, the guard would be unable to hold out indefinitely. Even worse, the fiefdom simply lacked the resources for a full-scale evacuation on such short notice. Nearly every horse and cart would be out in the fields, working diligently to feed a people who otherwise depended largely upon trade. We'll make for the stables, the earl said grimly. Quickly now. Escorted by a contingent of stone-faced guardsmen, the earl marched his three daughters toward the stables near the entrance to their estate. He ignored Gruen's loud protestations and questioning, but Anna already knew what her their father intended. The sounds of battle reached their ears from the harbor, and her mind's eye flooded with gruesome scenes conjured by her imagination. Quickly, girls, the earl commanded sharply, continuing his relentless march. They arrived to find the wide-eyed stable hands standing out front, while the horses themselves whinnied nervously inside the stalls. My lord Cardalis, one man exclaimed, stepping eagerly toward the earl. The guardsmen intercepted the man, who harumphed at their stiffness. We heard rumors of an invasion, but there's been no word from the town proper since the guard have got the gates sealed up good and tight. Is it true the Otterkeys intend to declare another war? With an air di of diplomacy, the Earl stretched out his hands to still the man's questioning. All I'm prepared to tell you is that the Breakwater Guard have the situation entirely in hand. 
Anna knew this was an outright lie, but she understood that he was facing difficult circumstances. Nonetheless, I'm sending my daughters to Woodhaven for the time being, the Earl continued. I need every last thoroughbred saddled and ready to ride. Now! She may have been too young to understand matters of state, but Anna was a good listener and very perceptive. Father, she said intently, you cannot send us off alone. The Earl's face flushed red. Regaining his composure, he glanced down at the other two before meeting Anna's obstinate glare. You won't be alone, he said with a forced smile, obviously intended for the other's benefit. These brave men are going to look after you, and in no time at all I'll come to collect you from Woodhaven. Something hammered suddenly against the gates, which quivered violently at the impact. Shouts and the ringing of steel reached their ears from outside the, the estate. Whatever fate was reserved for the citizens of Breakwater, it seemed the noble family was now doomed to share in it. Anna stared wide-eyed at the trembling oaken gates as the shouting grew in intensity. Find somewhere to hide, the earl said urgently to the panicked stable hands. Then, whirling about, he ushered his daughters and their guards back across the central courtyard. What are we going to do, father? Anna asked, looking up at him. As Tara began to take hold, she clutched her sister's hands even tighter. We'll make for the watchtower, the earl called over his shoulder. It'll be safe there. Again, Anna perceived the lie in her father's reassurance. He was simply doing his duty as a father and protector, she knew, but panic was impossible to hide from keen eyes like hers. Still, she followed along wordlessly, understanding that unmasking the earl's fear would be of no benefit to her sisters. The illusion of safety was their only remaining defense against these slavers from the north. Climbing the ladder at the top floor of the southernmost watchtower, Anna helped to guide her sisters up through the hatch opened by their father and onto the relative safety of the roof above. Once the earl and his men had secured and barred the hatch behind them, Anna wandered toward the crenellated wall surrounding them and peered out at the destruction being wrought in the streets below. She had never before witnessed such savagery as that now being perpetrated throughout her childhood home. The fiefdom's brave defenders fell in droves as endless mobs of untrained fighters flooded the docks with their axes and spears. Hundreds of them now marched through the streets, butchering any who raised arms to defend themselves. These slavers were not like the bandits Anna had seen from time to time, raiding storehouses for an extra bit of coin. They were the pariahs of decent civilization, traitors in human flesh, and they looked every bit the part. Anatris, her father called sternly, come and sit with your sisters for a while. Slowly, Anna tore her gaze from the scenes of carnage below. As the Earl walked over with his guardsmen to survey the battle taking place below, Anna sat beside Lunaria and Gruen with her back against the cold stone wall. What do you think will happen, Anna? Gruen said bluntly. Think we'll be killed by the bad men? Anna glanced over at Lunaria, who was visibly shaken with fright. Sliding a little closer, she put a comforting arm around her youngest sister. I think we'll be perfectly safe up here, she lied, just like Father said. Don't you, Lynn? I, I suppose so, the little one stammered. There was a loud crash below, and leaping to her feet, Anna rushed to her father's side to watch as the slavers battered their way through the gates of the manor and into the courtyard. Trained soldiers in smart blue uniforms fell before their relentless onslaught, a dreadful march headed by a man whose revolting appearance marked him as the leader of their motley band. He was bald, bearded, and rotund, and one bare, fleshy arm clutched the sort of meat cleaver one would expect to see hanging in the shop of a butcher. "'Get down, girl!' her father snapped, pushing her backward none too gently. "'Step away from the battlements,' he commanded his men, retreating toward the center of the rooftop. Familiar voices cried out for mercy as the slavers spread like wildfire throughout the manor, silenced suddenly by cruel hands and the weapons they wielded. Anna's heart shattered for the loyal servants she had known and loved, their lives ended abruptly by either the sting of a blade or the inescapable restraint of a cage. Holding her sisters tightly to herself as the men of the breakwater guard stood beside the hatch with swords and shields at the ready, Anna felt her chest thump violently when the echoes of grim voices reached them from inside the watchtower. As the wooden hatch shook suddenly with an impact from below, the Earl knelt before his three daughters and took each of their hands in his own. It's going to be all right, my loves, he said gently, kissing them each on the forehead in turn. The Earl was breathing heavily now, his torso trembling. Finally his gaze settled on Anna's, and she knew in her heart that her father was about to utter the last words he would ever say to her. Look after your sisters, Anatris, he said pleadingly, as though simultaneously beseeching the gods for their mercy. Promise me. Gruen and Lanaria were shaking and sniffling on either side of her, the latter most likely too young to understand what was happening. Hearing the hatch begin to splinter and give way, Anna bit back tears of her own and stared helplessly into the Earl's eyes. I will, father, she said softly, unable to manage anything more. All right, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to get through these next few pages uh, before my time is up. So, um, where did we leave off here? Okay, the Earl made Anna make him a promise. Okay. So that's most of chapter one. Uh, I'm not really sure how I'm going to divide up the rest of this, but um, my website has been a little lackluster for a while, and I wanted to have some actual work to put out there. So um, I'm going to leave it at this. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, pretty soon I'll, I, I may start putting um, PDFs of individual chapters that you can download and read. Um, I'm not sure how I'll do that, but uh, I've got 10 seconds left, so... Thanks again for watching, and stay tuned because there's a lot changing, and I'm not sure what I'll be able to get out there. 
Anyway, thanks a lot.